Welcome all. Thank you very much. Welcome to Berlin. Lots to look forward to. Lots of snooker to come between now and Sunday night. Three matches this afternoon and three Sages of the Bays alongside me. I'm delighted to say two left-handers and a righty. Neil Robertson, Jimmy White and Neil Folds all here to offer analysis. Neil, the tournament's loss, I guess, is, is our gain this week. What happened? Why aren't you playing this week? Um, I don't like the German fans very much. No, oh. <laughs> no um, uh, I played uh, Ashley Hugel, um, you know, just straight after the UK Championship, and um, you know he played played very well against me um, in the qualifying venue at Wigan, and uh, yes, yeah, so that's the reason why I'm here today. So we could say you didn't quite manage to do it on a cold Tuesday night in Barnsley, or we could say you were still on a little bit of a, a, a high, a post UK Championship win feeling of euphoria that you couldn't quite extend Clear to qualifying. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it was tough. I won the champion of champions, and then, you know, two weeks later, I won the UK championship. So, um, you know, to, to go to the qualifying venues, they're very tough for the top players. Um, it's not quite the same environment as playing in, in, in a big venue. And, um, yeah, my opponent just played better than me on the day. And um, the same happened with, uh, you know, Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know, John Higgins, also out of the event, Ding Jun Wee. So, um, you know, it, it's pretty tough under this format when you're just taking 32 to a venue. Uh, a few top players can get beat along the way. Yeah, even though, Jimmy, there are a few missing, there are plenty here who will stake a claim, I'm sure, to, to pick up this lovely trophy on Sunday night. Absolutely. You, you've got to fancy Mark Selby to be favourite. Alfie Bird and Flanner K. Maguire uh, needs to win a tournament to sort of um, set himself up for the season. But it's a great venue, and I think all the players will enjoy it. Yeah, it is a great venue. It's my first time here, but not, obviously, you three, Neil. And um, it's worth pointing out, not only is it a great tournament because the fans clearly have taken to snooker here and would love a champion or a, a contender of their own to cheer on, but the fact that there are three tables in play in plain sight at the same time is a factor, isn't it? Yeah, there is. It's a quite a gentle introduction. Uh, Stephen Hallworth, who's playing today, biggest match of his life. And as you say, someone new could win it this year and it could set up their, the rest of their season. It's a, it's a great event, this one. Yeah, it is a great event and clearly lots to look forward to, but we're already well into the snooker season. However, the calendar year started with a bang with the Masters a couple of weeks ago. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a night in prospect here at Ali Pali. Sean Murphy, Mark Allen, Yang Wen, Bo, John Higgins, Jack Trump. The Rocket, Lonnie Oversullivan. Who made it look so easy? Here's Neil Robinson. It's all over. A whitewash win for Australia's Neil Robertson. Champion of the world, Stuart Bingham. This yellow down the key shot. Oh, what a shame. No one for the seven for Stuart Bingham. And it's bang in the middle of the pocket. And it's been one of the best matches we've ever seen at the Masters. Sensational snooker. A great finish from Judd Trump. A lot of pressure on the shot. Got it. What a way to book his place in the semi finals of the Masters. It's there. It's there all day long. Great spot. The world number eight, one pressure pink away. He's done it. He's done it. And that's what it means. Just look at that. He remains the game's great enigma, and he remains the man to beat. What a way to win it. Two truly outstanding players contesting the title. He's going out in style. What other way would he win this? And 21 years after he first won the Masters, Ronnie O'Sullivan equals Stephen Hendry's record in six Masters titles. Well, Ronnie's uh, tournament break uh, ended with a bang with that win at the Masters. He'll be here at the weekend chatting, not playing because he, like you, failed to qualify uh, for this, which is an opportunity for others. Not least, Judd Trump, your conqueror in that tournament. Where's his form at the moment, Neil? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, with me winning the, the two previous uh, big events going into the Masters, um, you know, I was full of confidence and thought that um, someone's going to have to play the match of their life to beat me. And um, unfortunately for me that week, uh, Judd played snooker I've never seen him play before and um, you know, it was a wonderful match. We both played really well 
Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he's playing really well, and uh, he'll be pretty disappointed he didn't sort of go on with that though and get to the final to play Ronnie. Um, but um, I think he's you know going to be really focused here this week, and um, you know especially with a few of the other top players going out, I think he'll really fancy his chances. Something about the left-handers, Jimmy Barry Hawkins as well. Obviously had a terrific tournament at the Masters, and will come here with with hope, maybe a little expectation. He's obviously delighted to get to the final, but Judd Trump for me is one of the players that needs to win a tournament now before the World Championships coming up. They need to get one in the bag and uh, build their confidence up. Let's hear from the, uh, the man to beat, I think it's fair to say, this week. The defending champion, the world number one, a man who enjoys his snooker in Germany. That, of course, is Mark Selby. Neil Folds, obviously he'll be a red-hot favourite this afternoon against a 20-year-old from Lincoln, albeit I'm sure a talented one in Stephen Hallworth. He'll be a, a favourite for the tournament. Does he wear that tag lightly, Mark Selby? It could be a good start for Mark this afternoon with his draw. Yeah, there are others like Mark Allen we've not even mentioned yet who, who are in that uh, top four or five betting. But you've played against Stephen Hallworth, so what kind of opponent might Mark Selby meet this afternoon? Uh, yeah, I played him last year in um, one of the PTC events, and you know, he looks to have a you know quite a solid all-round game. Um, I don't think he'll be playing any sort of silly shots against Mark. So. Um, yeah, the, the start is, is so important for Stephen um, because, you know, Mark's a player who tends to get through the early rounds of events quite easily and, and quite convincingly. So, um, yeah, the, I think the first two frames are going to be crucial. And every player that achieves great things in the game starts as a wannabe, as a, as a, a guy with perhaps only a, a few pounds in his pocket. It's a big day for someone like Stephen Holbrook. He's had a bad run last year and you have to make your name in snooker. You don't just emerge fully fledged at the early stage of any tournament it's a shorter format only best of nine this afternoon so if you're going to catch a top player not off his guard but but coldish then that's the hope for the younger player isn't it that's definitely the hope um in his opponent mark selby has got a tough one because he doesn't play too many bad matches and even when he doesn't play at his best he's still very difficult to beat so that's going to be um, an awkward opening game we've, we've mentioned that he had a poor run of the results this season but he's done what, what this guy couldn't do and this guy couldn't do. He's won two matches to get here and Ronnie couldn't do it. So he's obviously a good player, beat mm. Lev Chire, beat Andy Hicks, and he could be a player on the up. I'm looking forward to seeing how he copes with a different kind of pressure. Yep, a contender not far away. Live snooker here in Berlin in just a couple of minutes' time. Stephen Holworth will come with hope, but it's the world number one who will hope to defend his title here in Berlin. And Mark Selby will be with us shortly. Neil Roberts and Jimmy Whiten. Neil Folds watching on with interest. You all talked pre-match, Neil, about the importance of the start and the early chances that the youngster might get. And he did have one or two, but it's been pretty much one-way traffic, hasn't it? Yeah, I think um, you know, Mark's playing well within himself. Um, you know, Stephen's sort of struggling out there. This is, I think it's his first time playing on TV in a, in a big, big competition. And, um, you know, the inexperience is, is showing at the moment. Yeah. You felt there were one or two moments in frame two, Neil Robertson, where... He, he might have got that foothold, but, but didn't quite. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, this is quite unlucky. I mean, um, it's the only red he can really leave, and, you know, he sticks it up for Mark, but he gets another chance in the frame. This is a very brave shot with the rest. Um, you know, brilliant shot playing it for the black. Um, and there's a lot of pressure on this black as well, because, I mean, if he misses it, he's, he's sticking the whole frame for mm -hmm. Mark Selby, and, you know, he's sort of done all the hard work now. He got himself in a great position, and then he just misses this, and we see that quite a lot from inexperienced players playing on television for the first time is that they, they miss these sort of balls for no apparent reason. And is that because opportunity suddenly knocks for you to actually win the frame? Yeah, all of a sudden the pressure's on you, you, you know, he's so desperate to, to get his first frame on the board. Um, whenever you're in your chair and you're looking at your score and you see, you know, a zero for the frames, um, you know, it's very tough and the longer it goes on, the harder it is to get, get into the match. Salt in the wound, frame four, Selby's left with one of those long half chances that he seems to relish, Neil. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best players in the world at playing this particular shot. Um, you know, there's not an awful lot he, he can leave on apart from the red he's playing. And, you know, he's played it perfectly there, you know, right in the middle of the pocket. And, I mean, at this stage, you know, Mark's under no pressure whatsoever. He's, he's very comfortable. And, um, you know, he knows if he makes a mistake that Stephen's not going to take his chance either. And as a top player playing on television, it's, it's a great position to be in. I wonder what, what the approach needs to be against Mark Selby. Obviously, you learn from each time you play as a 20-year-old as want to be a um, main tour player, but does he go guns blazing or does he try and play a, a safety first game, which Selby excels at? Um, 
I mean, he's getting he's getting a, a chance here or there. So you know, he's not really playing any wrong shots. He's not being overly aggressive, and you know, nor is he being negative. He's just not taking the chances that are being presented to him. So. He shouldn't do anything different. I mean, he's going to be completely relaxed at 4-0 because, you know, in theory, he's sort of lost the match. So, you know, I don't expect him to miss as many easy balls as what he has done in the match should he get another chance. Um, but, yeah, he's got to just try and win, you know, the next two frames and maybe apply a little bit of pressure on Mark. But with Mark's experience, I don't really see that happening. Mm. It's a learning curve then uh, for Stephen Holworth and pretty much what you'd expect from the defending champion who started well here this afternoon. Mark Selby in the balls early. And he's made Stephen Holworth pay for his mistakes. 4 0 and counting. Got any questions for our illustrious panel at Eurosport UK TV? Is the, uh, the social media means of getting in touch with questions or points of view? If you um, could put yourself back in Stephen Holworth's shoes as you would have been a few years back, Neil, what, what can he now take from a game that he's going to lose, but what does he potentially still have to play for here? Um, I guess from his point of view, it's all just about pride and you know, maybe just uh, knocking in a 50-60 break and getting one frame back on the board. Um, he'll try and stay out there for as long as possible, obviously, but um, you know, the most important thing is to try and you know, gain as much experience uh, from this as possible. I think they are due to restart very shortly out on uh, the tables. As you see, players just re-emerging.